Hello YouTube, this time I'm painting a portrait of the beautiful Tsunaina. I'll link her Instagram in the info bar down below. Um, I actually painted this two years ago and recorded this. Um, seems like I was really sure that I was going to make a YouTube channel and uh, it took me just over two years to do it. Um, I guess that's also the reason why the layers and the tools are not recorded in this because I didn't really know how to record in Photoshop. Um yes, um, that's how I usually start my process. I just paint the lines and try to make a sketch of, it, of the portrait or of the person. And then um, I refine the... The nice thing in painting digitally is that you can cut out the features. Um, for example, the nose or the eyes and then um, move them so you get the position right um, when you paint traditionally it's not that easy to correct something so that's really nice in photoshop i think it was really difficult to get her skin color right um, i don't know if this is the final base layer of the skin color i'm not sure um, but i always start with a flat layer of color and then i add um, some more layers. Unfortunately, it didn't record the layers um, as I mentioned before, but that's how I usually work. Um, I just add more layers with different colors and I guess sometimes I also set the opacity to a lower level, um, but I think this will come later the step. And then I'll try out different colors for um, shadow areas and highlight areas and it's also diff uh, it's also important that you when you use shadow colors for your portraits or for your paintings that you don't use the same exact color as the base color um, so you can move your color wheel or the the eyedropper on the color wheel a little bit so you don't get the exact color um, just in dark or just in a darker shade so it varies a little bit and thus it looks more lively and um, that's what i experienced over time so i definitely try to set the base color for everything first it doesn't have to be um, exact or it doesn't have to look right at this step we will go over it definitely later and um, smooth out and blend the colors um, in the process uh, later in the process and I'm also trying not to overblend too much because I figured out or I noticed that I like a bit of texture in painting so it doesn't look like too clean and too um, soft somehow because then it looks like the texture that I don't want to achieve in Photoshop or when painting digitally. Um, yeah, that's just not what I like. So I like a little bit of texture. I always use textured brushes um, and set them to, to transfer. And sometimes I always, uh, sometimes I also lower the opacity of the brushes as well. So I don't get the full color um, because when I'm not sure what the color um, will be or which color I really want for this, it's easier to lower the opacity and um, so you try a more careful approach. At the beginning I try to focus on the skin first because I want it to um, look right before I move on to the eyes or the lips or what else. The hair for example or the background. Um, I think the background is the last thing I will do because I love to focus on faces and I love to draw faces and that's why I usually do them first. So you see um, we've made a little bit of progress with the skin. It's not finished yet but um, it's in a phase that I feel confident that I can move on with um, the other features. So I painted the base colors of the lips and the eyes and eyebrows and now I try to continue or <laughs> not trying, I continue with the lips. Um, and the nose and make some sharp edges so it doesn't look too smooth uh, or too smoothed out 
because that looks unnatural somehow and I don't want that. And as always you can really easily correct things that you made wrong or that you made um, when you made a mistake. Oh my gosh, my English. <laughs> when you made a mistake. So that's really great. Um, I love that we can do that, uh, this digitally. Um, traditionally it's way more complicated. So now that I lay the base color for the eyes and everything, um, I move on with the shading of the skin and you see I use different colors for um, the shadows and I also use a rosy tone for blushed areas and um, yeah we smooth it out in the end at this stage it looks still quite rough I think um, but in the end it will look fine and I'm actually really proud of this portrait um, although I painted it two years ago I still think it's it's pretty good, pretty solid, <laughs> I think. I always found it way easier to um, paint portraits or studies or um, paint something from vision, not from mind. I think that's way easier because you have the object in front of you or the person in front of you or what, el what else you um, would draw. And so I think that is way easier. Um, what do you think? Do you have a preference? My preference is painting from my mind, um, but unfortunately it's not always that good as if I painted it from, from a portrait or from a photograph or something. Um, that's also why I would recommend always using um, some kind of a reference. Um, Regardless of what you're drawing, um, it just always helps. And I know it's really um, time consuming and it's really um, stressful and annoying to take photos and um, make your references out of it for a painting, but it's really worth it. So for big paintings, I always use references. Um, when I just draw something, I don't use them most of the time because I just want um, to doodle something and um, therefore I don't need them but well if I want to practice really practice or if I want to draw a special um, pose or something then I use references but not all the time um, I think we made quite the progress with the skin I really like the highlights in this and I think the eyes look beautiful as well and um, I also like how the lips turn out. I'm really bad at painting lips, I feel like, but I think in this case, because I had a reference, um, it was easier. Although perhaps there is a little bit too much contrast in it. Hmm, I'm not sure quite yet. Right now it doesn't look right for me, but I'm not, I don't remember how it looks in the end. Um, but we will see how it progresses. And I added a gradient in the background. I'm not sure why I did this. Perhaps she had something similar in the background um, in the photograph. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> and that's the bad thing when you record something and then it's two years later and you don't remember anything. Um, I think I should work on the nose a little bit more because it needs some more hard edges or some more refined edges. I hope I'll do that. Um, but it seems like I would. And what else is missing? Yeah, I think she does wear a top that I don't really um, render a lot. I think that was... I, I didn't have any patience anymore. I don't know, I just tend to focus on one part of the painting and then I forget about other parts that would be equally important, I think. So I should have put more effort into her top, but I'm sure I didn't do it. Um, there I'm adding just more shadows and 
She looks like an old woman kind of at the moment because her hair is kind of gray and unrefined and um, you don't know where it goes or how it progresses. And I'm not sure if I will render out her neck and her um, shoulders a little bit more. At the moment it looks quite unrendered and unfinished. Um, there I'm turning back to the eyes. They're not really, if you get close to them or if you zoom in, it's everything is not that detailed as you think um, if you would zoom out. But I, I kind of like it. So you have more texture and it's not, everything is so smooth and it reminds me a little bit of paint strokes or brush strokes perhaps. Mm, and I really like that. Ah, okay, finally I'm <laughs> starting to render the shoulders and the, the collarbones and the neck. Um, what am I doing? I'm just color picking colors from her face and um, yeah, then color everything in. I don't tend to use the color wheel as much. I use the color dropper or eyedropper more because it seems like it's more because it looks more homogeneous um, in my opinion and I also tend to use too much contrast when I um, when I work with the color the, the color wheel um, now we're working on her hair I'm just putting in some base colors um, and trying to get her hair strands right I'm not putting too much emphasis on um, rendering out the hair if I'm honest. I'm more focusing on the face. Um, gosh, I really should do more hair renders. I'm, I'm not really confident in painting hair and I feel like sometimes you see that because they just always focus on the face and the hair is kind of like um, left out or not that pronounced perhaps or not that yeah just rendered i guess oh yeah this is a part i really enjoy i use colors that i see in the face but that i don't really um can paint because when you overlay it with other colors in photoshop it doesn't turn out like the color you want to or you intend it to be so i just pick a really um bright color and then um, set the layer to overlay I think so I switch the um, the layer mode to overlay and I think it looks quite good and then I also tend to use um, a noise filter so that it just doesn't look that clean and um, rendered and I added some of her moles and set them to a lower opacity I think. Oh there I'm trying to <laughs> paint her top but you can see I'm not really paying attention to detail there and yeah I guess that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys!